in on secure channel. I went ahead and hit the uh, record button, and I know people are coming in, but I wanted to go ahead and get this session done first. Um, of course, I can't put the stuff that's on my work computer on my big laptop at home, so I have to switch when I want to use these little, you know, tools. So I appreciate y'all being patient with me. There is Remon's, and I need you to write down Remon because I want to make sure we go over Remon. So if any teacher in Calc 2 asks you that, you will say what? What? You will say yes. Hubert went over that. Oh, I didn't understand what you were asking. Uh, yeah, in other words, when you go into Calc 2, and Calc 2 teacher says, well, Hubert probably didn't show y'all Remon's theorem. You can say what? Yes, he did. What is Remon's theorem? Well, we're, go we're going into integration, okay? I wish I had my pen. I wish I could use my pen right now, but I can't. We're going into integration. And integration where derivatives is finding the equation of the line Derivatives is finding the area under a curve or the area between two curves. So when you're talking about area under a curve, let's say, let's say that you want to find the area under a curve and you want to start off with three like that. Okay. And you want to go from like that negative two the positive two or negative what is that a negative that's a negative two that would be a one from negative two to one i want to find this area well there's three ways you can find the area under a curve one is geometry i can take the length of that curve let's see that's i meant the base that's two and the height of this is about three and a half so I can take three and a half times two, that's seven. And then I can take two times two, that's four. And then five times two, or what is that? Two and a half times two is five. So five plus four, I think I said that's seven. Seven is 16. So the area in orange is 16 square units. That's how you do geometry. So I want everybody to write down geometry. You can find the area under the curve with geometry. Just basic length times width, dividing it up into rectangles. Or you can apply the limit theory with Riemann sum or with derivatives. And you can make each one of those curves, make each one of these big boxes into what? Into smaller boxes, Schubert. And why is it not doing it? There we go. I couldn't answer your question because I've never seen this. I'm sorry. Into smaller boxes. Look at there. So we went from three boxes. Now we're at 15 boxes. Now we're going to get, let's get them about the width of a hair. So let's see how far they'll go. Well, they'll keep going infinitely because that's the limit theory. So we're going to apply the limit theory to our geometry now. And we're going to take, now we're up to 30 boxes, 32 boxes. And what's it doing each time is adding another box. It's getting more and more accurate because the little triangle at the top of the boxes are, is becoming smaller and smaller so let's redo that because it's very important that you understand what we're doing right now remember me telling you about the half of half of a step to the wall half of the step to the wall you got to think in ter terms of limits same thing here so i'm gonna go back to three why won't it let me change it there we go 
I'm going to go back to three. And I want you to concentrate on this area right here, that triangle right there. And this, whatever that is right there, semicircle, parabola, whatever. And this triangle right here. Okay? I want you to concentrate on those three parts. And then concentrate on this part also. Because that's the part of error. If you're not from around here, it's error. If you're from around here, it's error. E-R-R. -R. Okay? So that's error. This is error. This is error. This is error. And this right here is going to become an error. So we're going to hit... And we're just going to add one box each time. Now you're thinking out of the box, and you're thinking, okay, well, instead of three, I'm going to make my boxes the width of a hair. And that's where we're heading. And look at the triangles at the top. What are the triangles at the top doing as you increase your boxes? Getting smaller. They're getting smaller. Your error is getting smaller. Your preciseness or your accuracy is getting better. <clears throat> and as you can see, look at your look at your area in orange, 8.75, 8.752, 8.755. 8 and by the time you get to 80, you've got those boxes about the width of a hair. You're not going to be able to tell it with the naked eye. And it's getting closer and closer and closer to the actual to the actual area. Now, there are three types of Riemann sums. Now, I'm going over Riemann sums first because that way you can spend more time looking at it and reading about 5.1. But I really don't. I'm not going. I might test you on it but it might be one question on the whole test, okay? Riemann's sum is what gives us, it's what gives us the derivative, okay? Riemann's sum gives us the derivative like the limit theory and the slope gives us the derivative, okay? So Riemann's sum is kind of a gateway into the derivative. So I'm going to put this back on three, And I want you to notice something. Right now, we're on the left. So that means I'm going to use this point. I'm going to use this point. And I'm going to use this point. We'll talk about this later today. Okay? If I change it to a right-hand side, then I'm going to use this point. Let me see if I can hide that. There we go. I'm going to use this point, And I'm going to use this point. Okay? In other words, I'm putting the triangles on the opposite side. Okay, let me hide left side. This triangle's over here, and this bare area is right here. If I do the left side, the right side, your area is going to be about the same. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be about the same. Or I could use the midpoint using this point right here as a location marker. Okay? The midpoint kind of takes the best of both of these. Then you could also use a trapezoid. You could use that. Basic geometry. And you could hit this. And you see that the error gets smaller and smaller. You apply the limit theory and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, taking half of a half of a step, half of a half of a step. You get to that hairline, get to the width of a hair. And as you can tell, 8.813, it continues. I mean, it's not changing very much because once you get past 36, I mean, once you get past 30, uh, rectangles, 
It's not going to change that much. Change that much. Okay, so that's Remon. Remon uses rectangles, and I'll show you what it does. And it uses sigma, and I'll show you all that in just a minute. That's Remon, and we could probably do a natural log, and we could do. Let's see. Let's do. Let's do three again, if it'll let me. Let's do five. Okay, show left. Let's do, I like midpoints myself. There we go. All right, does everybody see that? They want to find the area from, it looks like negative 0.5 or 0.6, wherever A is. We can change that. I don't know if we can change it or not. Let me see. Yeah. Let's go from one to four. Okay, one to four. Everybody with me? Now, you could do the width of each one of these is like two. Well, it's close to two, but I'm not going to say it's two. And then you could do the height. This height is 0.5, so that's going to be 0.5 times two, which is one. The area of that one's one. This looks like 1.25 times two is, is 2.5. So that's 2.5 plus, I think we said that was 2. In other words, you just start adding them up. That's geometry. Riemann's theory uses geometry. Okay? And I hit this, and we're going to apply the limit theory with geometry now. And there... Curve. Yes, and I'll show you that in just a minute. I can't show you anything right now because I got this little computer that's a good paperweight. Okay, so that's that. Now let me get out of this and show you an antiderivative. Open, and I bet it. I bet it doesn't have integration. I bet it goes straight to area under a curve. Let me see. Yep. Yep. So we're going to go to area under a curve. Area between two curves. There we go. Oh, I didn't want to do this. Let's go to y squared. Yeah. Show graphs. I didn't want to do that, but, and you, this is where we use the derivatives. And we're, we're, no, I don't want to sweep. I want to, yeah, sweep Y. We can. I really wanted to sweep X. Hold on a minute. There we go. Let me go with, let's go with this one. Show graphs. There we go. And sweep X. This is what we're heading for. I want you to be able to do this by the end of chapter five. Okay, I want you to be able to tell me what that red area is. And it's real simple. It's not very difficult as long as you know how to take the antiderivative of something. Okay, the antiderivative of negative x squared plus five is negative x to the third over three plus five x. And you, if you know that, if you can do that, like you can play the piano when you practice, then you'll be able to do this and not have a big deal, not, might not be a big deal. But that's where we're heading. That's our goal right there for the end of Chapter 5, because I'm taking a little bit out of Chapter 6, Unit 4, and I'm going to put it in Unit 5. And basically, this is part of Unit 6, the first part of Unit 6. Okay, so that's where we're heading. So now... I can, I'm going to shut this down, and I'm going to call you up in the other computer, if that's okay with y'all. Y'all don't mind waiting, do you? I hope not. No. Nope. Okay. I appreciate, I appreciate y'all being patient.
you know, in any other place, I would have a computer, you know, from my workstation, I would have a computer, you know, beefed up enough to where we could do this, but not at T-Rex Community College. All right, stop and stop recording.